Hey guys, welcome to Priceless B Movies. I'm your host, Colin Price. Uh, you know, there's a big thing these days with remakes. Uh, for all genres, there's a big thing with remakes. And, you know, I I'm one of those people who I generally try to be cautiously optimistic. In the last several years, there's only been like a couple of times where I've heard that something was being remade and I thought, nope, I'm not even giving that a chance. Uh, Poltergeist was one of them. Uh, Friday the 13th was one of them, where I just thought, there's no way I can see this being as good as the original. But those couple of examples aside, I'm normally pretty lenient. I did really like the Fright Night remake. I did really like the Nightmare on Elm Street remake even, all like for different reasons than I like the original. But this is one of the rare occasions where I think a remake is more entertaining than the original. That's right, motherfuckers. Bring on the hate. House on Haunted Hill. House on Haunted Hill stars Jeffrey Rush, Famke Jansen, and a bunch of people who at some point in the movie are gonna die. Jeffrey Rush is this uh, kind of eccentric millionaire who's made his fortune off of designing theme parks that are all more or less horror-oriented. If you guys have ever gone to a carnival or a fair and there's been like that haunted house ride, you know, where you go in and it kind of takes you through the house on a little on a little track and then every so often a bloody person or a skeleton or something jumps out and goes boo at you, this is the guy who would have designed those. From here on, it gets really scary. But he's made whole theme parks full of that kind of crap. The other thing about Jeffrey Rush's character is that he loves to trick people. He loves to play tricks on people. He's a natural-born prankster. There's a great bit uh, early on in the movie where he's taking uh, two journalists on a couple of his rides, and you see kind of how he uh, manipulates people into thinking that they're in grave danger when they're really not. Anyway, Jeffrey Rush has his wife, played by uh, Famke Jansen. Her uh, name in the movie, the character's name is Evelyn. Evelyn has a birthday coming up, and you know, she and Jeffrey Rush both hate each other. Really hate each other. And I'll say this, as venomous as that hatred that they have for each other is, it gives way to a lot of great dialogue. Check this out. Evelyn, go stir your call room or something for a sec. I don't think Evelyn said those words to anything with testicles. Ever. Very funny, Stephen. Have you? You know, if you really love me, you find a way to drop dead in the next three seconds. Finding ways for me to die is really your deal, isn't it, Evelyn? <laughs> it's great stuff. But anyway, um, Jeffrey Rush being the kind of guy he is, uh, he asks Evelyn, you know, like, what, you know, what, uh, what do you want to do for your birthday coming up? And she says, well, she wants to have a party at this uh, supposedly haunted house, house on Haunted Hill, and she wants to invite some of her friends, and, you know, he basically takes this as an opportunity. He gets her guest list for the party. He shreds it. He makes his own one up and invites uh, five people who are seemingly strangers to this location. But he's ever the showman. He writes a million dollars in checks to all the people who come to this party, and he says, if you are still here in the morning and you're still alive, then you will get this money. Obviously, this is kind of a prank that he's playing. He's set up various boogeyman booby traps and stuff to try to scare the guests away. But then, lo and behold, the house is actually haunted. Now, I remember when this movie came out in 1999, I was still in middle school, and, um, you know, I had the kind of parents who didn't want me to see, you know, R-rated movies, real bloody movies, real, uh, you know, they were uh, very religious, they didn't want me to see this kind of stuff, and I actually ended up, uh, I had to wait till video and go over to a friend's house and watch it, and from all the adver all the advertisements of this movie made it seem like it was kind of corny but that there were a lot of cool things to look at you know they show off like the uh, the ink blot ghost as i'll call it and they show off uh you know paintings coming alive and specters appearing and disappearing you know just kind of fun stuff i was really surprised when i saw the movie at how creepy some of it was uh, it kind of threw me through a loop this movie at first glance seems like it is more about camp and humor than anything else. So it did really surprise me, as I said, when the film was also very capable of being a frightening movie. Particularly a run-in that uh, one of the guests at this party 
uh, who carries around a video camera with her, uh, an encounter that she has in the basement, but also a uh, kind of psychedelic Jacob's Ladder-esque hallucination that Jeffrey Rush has later on in the movie. These things really creeped me out when I first saw it, and they still kind of creep me out to this day. There are some very effective scares in this film, which is more than I can say for most haunted house movies that came out in the 90s. The fact that the film balances the scares and the humor so well wouldn't come as such a surprise to me if the film was released today because of the director, William Malone. Uh, nowadays, I know his work fairly well. He directed several really great episodes of Tales from the Crypt in his time, and also a film that I reviewed a little while back called Parasomnia. He has a genuine eye for kind of freakish imagery. House on Haunted Hill has a lot of humor, has a lot of great dialogue, has this wonderful performance by Jeffrey Rush under this, with his John Waters mustache, you know. But, as I said, it, it constantly surprises me when I watch this movie how back and forth I'm laughing really hard at something and then I'm terrified not even a minute later. In the original film, which starred Vincent Price, by the way, um, there was this kind of sense that you weren't sure if some of the spooky goings-on were kind of these booby traps that he had set throughout the house just to scare people, or if it was a genuine threat, like it was a real ghost that you were seeing. And the movie really did play on what's real and what's a prank that was placed there. Whereas this film makes it very clear very soon that these are real ghosts and these people are in a lot of danger. I... I don't know if I like that. I, I think there should have been more ambiguity there and that uh, you should have wondered, you know, what was going on instead of knowing that there were flat out these ghosts of these mental patients butchering everybody. That's, the, that's one thing that I don't really care for. The other thing is that uh, I love the casting in this movie in some of the smaller parts, but... I don't think that the actors who are cast in some of these uh, smaller parts and supporting parts are... they're not allowed to play to their strengths. For example, why in Pooh Perfect Hell would you cast Jeffrey Combs as the ghost of a mad surgeon and not give him any dialogue? Those things aside, though, House on Haunted Hill is a great movie. It's one of those movies that, like, if I'm ever really bored and really don't know what to watch, I know I can put in House on Haunted Hill and be entertained. This is... I love that they go kind of the slasher movie route with it, and so there's a lot of gore and there's a lot of intensity and there's a lot of scares, but I also love the humor. This is one of those movies that I think perfectly balances humor and horror, and that's really hard to do, so I have to give credit to any movie that effectively does that. House on Haunted Hill gets three and a half stars. If you haven't seen it, you should look into it, especially if you're a fan of the kind of less serious haunted house films. So that's my review of House on Haunted Hill. Stay tuned, i got a lot more reviews coming. Also, and as always, if there's a movie you can think of that's either overlooked or underappreciated by mainstream audiences or critics or both, and you want to know what I think about it, please let me know in the comments section below, and I'll see what I can do about getting a hold of a copy of that movie and putting up a review for you. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more Priceless B-Movies.